Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the home of the Golf Betting Show and the Golf Betting System podcast. We are back with the 2024 Valspar Championship, the Golf Betting Show. It's for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gambler aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit the Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. Uh, my betting preview is there. We've got Paul Williams' Singapore or Porsche Singapore Classic betting preview there. We've got different strokes gained rankings. We've got predictor models. We've got form tables. It's all completely free of charge. It's your own golf betting suite and you don't have to pay for it. So golf betting system. We are back with the Val Spa. Um, it was great last week. The Players' Championship was my best Players' Championship for 15 years of doing betting content. So uh, more than pleased with that. Scotty Scheffler at 6-1 to one on the win. I had, uh, I had Harmon at 66-1. to one. T2. I had Matsuyama as well. Matsuyama. Matsuyama. At 28-1. to one. He had a... A full each way tie for sick as well. It was a great week. Loved the tournament. Oh, I suppose you would if you've got three guys and or three three guys in the top uh, eight, and one of those actually wins. It's always a good week, isn't it? But loved the players' championship. What do I need from you guys? Uh, I have to say, I was a bit disappointed with the amount of likes that we got last week on the players' championship. So, can we get back? It'd be fantastic. 175 likes from you guys would be fantastic. Look. With these videos, I could, I could just not do them at all. So the likes are, impo are really in, in, uh, important. On top of that, we did crash through 4,200 subscribers last week. So thank you for that. Don't forget, four weeks away from the Masters. So those likes are important. You guys subscribing to the show. I know that about 50% of you do and 50% of you don't. So please press that sub uh, subscribe button if you don't or aren't. A YouTube follower, subscriber. And on top of that, to help the algorithm, the likes, the amount of people subscribing, please comment in the sections below. Doesn't matter what you say, just comment. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Let me know who you fancy at the Valspar, who you don't fancy at the Valspar. What do you think of the course? What did you think of last week at the players? Just let me know what you think in the comment section. It all helps the algorithm. Algorithm is the Lord. Right. Let's take you through this week's 2024 Valspar Championship content. Naturally, as ever here, uh, the the tournament after the players always seems like a bit of a bit of a step backwards, but it's not a bad field with Xander Schofle, the eight to one favourite. Hmm. Right, the course itself, it's the Copperhead course, played at Innisbrook Resort, Palm Harbour in Florida. A Larry Packard 1971 original with a Wadsworth restoration in 2015. So all of the data you've got up to Jordan Spieth in 2015, pretty irrelevant. Uh, course type Carolina. So I know this is in Florida. It's the Tampa Bay area, but effectively this is no Florida golf course. Okay, Florida players, Florida uh, Bay Hill, Florida PJ National, water everywhere, flat as a pancake. Blah blah blah. This is more Carolina. Tree line, dog legs everywhere. Tree lined, thin fairways, uh, Bermuda grass in effect. So, the length of the golf course, it's 7,340 yards. Its par is 71. So, I classify it as medium in length. And in terms of its difficulty, hard to say these days on the PGA Tour when everything is being defunct, uh, declassified, if you like, so that birdies are king. I mean, 20 under winning the Players' Championship. But I've got a feeling this week, with the amount of wind that's in the forecast, this could be similar to last year. So 10 to 12 under par wins this. So if you're if you're sort of seven, eight, you could be in the each way places. It's a it's a tech. It's going to be a technical score, I think, this week. Holes with water hazards nine. 
Uh, number of sand bunkers 74, acres of fairway 25. The fairways are, themselves are celebration Bermuda grass. It's all overseeded with Poa Trivialis. Uh, the rough is celebration Bermuda grass, again overseeded with rye grass this time. They've let it grow 3.75 inches. Tougher test. They've made the rough as well a lot closer to the green surfaces. The greens themselves, 5,822 square feet on average. Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. It's almost as if we were saying this last week for uh, the, uh, the TPC Sawgrass. Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass with Poa Trivialis overseed. Last year, this course played at 71.94, so 0.94 over par for the field, which made it the seventh most difficult course of 49 on the PGA Tour last year. The fairways at 300, wide, uh, 300 yards are 21 yards wide. Now, to put that into some kind of context, Sawgrass last week, at 300 yards carry, the fairways were 30 yards wide. So nine yards thinner on average per fairway at the Copperhead course this week. It's a bit of a brew, it has to be said. And when you throw that in with the amount of length that's required here, it's a bit of a difficult challenge. I'd, I'd call it, it's kind of death by a thousand cuts. Of course, what you haven't got here is too much water in play. I mean, nine of the holes are waterless. So the penalty for missing fairways in terms of, you know, uh, instant penalty strokes isn't as bad as we saw last week and probably also at Bay Hill over the previous two weeks. But those are very much Florida golf courses. The other thing to point out here, it's a bit of a strange setup. Uh, Copperhead achieves this unique layout as it contains four par fives, par 71, and five par threes. Other things to note here, again, this is no wedge fest. A lot of these holes are from a hunt approaches from 175 yards and out. So... Uh, and, of course, I'll have to get it in there because all of the other content will. The Snake Pit, namely hole 16 to 18, which adds real bite to the closing stretch, especially on Sunday. So, yeah, it's tough. It's tough enough. It's long enough to make uh, a lot of these pros go in with mid-irons and above. So, certainly no wedge fest. The weather. Well, also, yes. Um, where it's due, there's a, I think it's a 65 to 70% chance of rain on Monday of tournament week. That's today as I'm recording this in the shires of the UK. So um, I think there'll be a bit more cut in the fairways this time around. Copperhead has always been renowned for a course that doesn't take a lot of water. And does play particularly firm and fast. Now, that is very anti-PGA Tour in 2024. So whether they'd have got the Tampa Bay Fire Brigade just to turn up anyway and smother the course in water, who knows. But the weather seems to have done its job. There was lots of rain here January, February through March. Uh, rain due Monday and also rain due during play on Friday. Some of it thundery so I wouldn't be surprised if we see some suspension so I reckon a softer golf course but not necessarily an easier golf course Thursday's going to be the scoring day I'm not seeing a breath of wind over 10 miles an hour and then from that point on it starts blowing gusting 25 on Friday with those thunderstorms thrown in Saturday looks like it's gusting 20 the same on Sunday that's going to make this a tough old test. Uh, winners here in terms of winning scores. Taylor Moore last year 10 under. Again that blew hard for 54 holes last year. Sam Burns at 17 and Sam Burns at 17. Don't see those totals being in play this year around. Might be wrong. Paul Casey at 8 under in 2019 and Paul Casey at 10 under 
in 2018. They were windy. They were particularly firm. Don't see the firmness. So I think maybe 10 to 12. Adam Hadwin, 14 under in 2017. Patrick Cantlay was going to play this, but was a Sunday WD, as was Tom Kim. It's a shame because Kim, and especially Cantlay at the top of the market, would have given us better prices further down the field. Right, let's take you through the skills are required to win around here. So I'm, I'm taking this across all the victories back to Hadwin in 2016, basically when the course restoration first came to the PGA Tour. Uh, these are skill set averages of the champions of those players that made the cut, averaged them through. Strokes gained off the tee, 33rd. For reference, that is level with Pebble Beach as the most inconsequential strokes gain number so far this season, off the tee. That's important. Sixth on approach, very important. 19th around the green, the same kind of number that we saw last week at the players. T to green, fourth. Strokes gain putting. This is where it does vary from the players because before Scotty Scheffler won last week, the strokes gained of the champions going back to McElroy in 2019 was 34th in the field for strokes gain putting. Um, again, Scheffler, I think, made about a quarter to a third of a stroke gained per round. So that number isn't going to differ much. Here at the Valspar, and also includes a year, of course, where Kemp Smith uh, topped Strode's game party. But here at the Valspar, you've got to be able to putt well. 13th for Strokes game putting is the average of the winners going back to Adam Hadwin. So 33rd off the tee, 6th on approach, 19th around the green, 4th for tee to green, and 13th for Strokes gained putting. From a traditional statistics perspective um, of course I'm running through uh, driving accuracy greens in regulation all the good old stuff and again I'm going back to Adam Hadwin draw uh, to Charles Svartzel actually sorry Charles Svartzel was the winner in 2016 driving distance 19th driving accuracy 36th Greens in regulation 14th, proximity to hold 25th, scrambling 25th, putting average 6th. Wow, got to have a part of this week, haven't you? Yeah, so that's where we're at, the Val Spa Championship. If you've made it this far, at Bamford Golf on, on X, please follow me. Of course, like the show, 175 likes. Join, subscribe to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel as we march towards Augusta and... Comment in the sec uh, comment section below. All of my content, by the way, the preview, strokes gained rankings, all of the uh, form data, and the predictor model, all in the description below this video. Um, yeah, so come and use it free of charge. Right, top 10 of this week's predictor model. I pulled this together this morning. Uh, top 10. 10... Victor Perez, the Frenchman, 100 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way. If I mention 8, eight each way places, all of 50 odds. 9 is Doug Gim. This man is so consistent, it's unbelievable. 55 to 1 on Gim, Bet Fred, 8 places each way. 8 is Jordan Spieth, 14 to 1 with Skybet, 8 places each way. 7 is Cam Young, 22 to 1 with Bet365, 8 places each way. Six, Keith Mitchell, 50 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Five, Nick Taylor, 40 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Four, JT, as per Spieth, 14 to 1 with Skybet, eight places each way. Guy that hasn't won for two years, 14 to 1. Three, Tony Finau, 25 to 1 with Skybet, eight places each way. Two, Mr. Copperhead himself, Sam Burns, 12 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way. Number one, of course, he finished second last week, Xander Schofle. 8 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way on Xander. 
Right. What about strokes gained ranking, Steve? I know that a lot of you find this the most useful part of the show. Off the tee clearly isn't important this week. So let's take you through it. As I always say, within my preview, I have these rankings for the top 25 players across all of these skill sets. This is data over an eight-week window that includes the PJ Tour and the DP World Tour. Right, strokes gained on approach, top 12. A tie for 12th, Sam Burns and Ben Martin. 11 is Victor Perez. 10 is Max Grazerman. 8, Doug Gim, Cam Young. You're going to hear Doug Gim a hell of a lot. 7 is Lucas Glover. I know I haven't put him up. 4, Parker Coody who's been playing some good stuff, Xander and Nick Taylor. Three is Justin Thomas. Two, Christian Bezadenhut. Number one, Tony Finau. Strokes gain tee to green, top 12. A tie for 11th, Sam Burns and Victor Perez. Ten is Nick Taylor. Nine, Blaine Hale Jr. Eight, Cam Young. Seven, Rafael Campos. Six is Lucas Glover. Five is Parker Coody again. Four is Doug Gim again. Three, Justin Thomas. Two, Tony Finau. Number one, of course, it's Xander. Strokes game putting. Now, that is a relevance this week, isn't it? Top 12, current form over the last eight weeks. 12 is Pearson Coody. A tie for ninth, Chesson Hadley, Bo Hosler and Jordan Spieth. Eight is Jacob Bridgman. Seven is Stuart Sink. Six is Luke Donald. Five is Aaron Badley. Four is Sam Burns. Three is Nick Taylor. Two is Trace Crow. Number one, a guy that I really did have my eye on, but unfortunately finished too far up the places at the players. I'll go into that in a short while. Taylor Mont. Gomery. And strokes gained total. So this is strokes gained current form. Top 12. A tie for 11th. Justin Thomas and Cameron Young. 10 is Bo Hosler. 9 is Maverick McNeely. Did well to hang on last week, I thought, with Maverick. As ever, for those of you who are regular, you will know, Maverick McNeely only plays well on short golf courses. 8. Rafael Campos. Seven, Tony Finau. Six, Nick Taylor. Five, Sam Burns. Four, Bryce Garnett. Three, Xander. Two, Hayden Springer. We were on him a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? 80 to one in Puerto Rico. Number one, you know it's going to be, don't you? It's going to be Doug Gim. Number one, strokes gained, current form in this field. You can grab him for 55 to one with Bet Fred. Eight places each way as I record this podcast. Uh, winning prices of winners here. And yes, I'll keep trotting them out in each and every week because it's my show. To, uh, 2023, Taylor Moore, 70 to 1. 2022, Sam Burns, 25 to 1. 2021, Sam Burns, 80 to 1. Paul Casey, 25 to 1. Paul Casey, 25 to 1. Adam Hadwin, 125 to 1. The average over the past five renewals, 45 to 1. The average going way back to Jim Boyle, Jim Furyk in 2010. Good old Jim. Jim and Fluff, what a show they were. Overall average, 67 to 1. So, the shortest prices I've seen winning this since 2015 are Jordan Spieth, 16 to 1. Paul Casey, 25 to 1. Paul Casey, 25 to 1. Sam Burns, 25 to 1. So I am not chasing Jordan Spieth or Justin Thomas or Sam Burns or Xander. Sub 12 to 1. Sub 16 to 1. That is not happening. Just not happening. Uh, Taylor Moore was a rookie. He won at 70 to 1. Adam Hadwin... Hadn't won on tour, 125 to 1. 
Sam Burns the first time hadn't won on tour 80 to 1. Those are interesting prices 70 to 1, 80 to 1, 125 to 1. So if you are fancying, or even John Sendon, John Sendon in 2014 hadn't won for something like six years, he won this at 125 to 1. Those prices from 70 and up are very much in play. So you seem to be getting this 25 to 1 mark. So elite player, and then there's a big gap, and then you are getting 70 to 1. The one player I um, would like to have backed and haven't backed is Sepp Straka. He's at 66s. I wouldn't put any of you off. Couldn't fit him into my team. Uh, official world golf ranking of Falspar Championship winners. And didn't it, it was interesting last week that that sub, the best top 10 in the world number stuck. And it stuck with Scotty Scheffler. He was competing with three other players who were in the world's top 10. So some of this stuff is does actually track through. Taylor Moore was 101st. Burns 17th. Burns 94th. Casey 15th. Casey 17th. So Moore, 101st, and Burns, 94th, were first-time winners. I believe Adam Hadron was around about 120. Burns, 17, Casey, 15, Casey, 17, in terms of world ranking. i tell you where I'm starting, and I, I've been talking about this player for the whole... Well, I wouldn't say the whole, but certainly since we got to Florida... Um, I'm starting this week on Cam Young, who plays well in the Sunshine State. He's also got a top three finish on a Carolina golf course at uh, Harbour Town, where they play the RBC Heritage. He's ranked at 23rd in the world. He's 28th on the data golf rankings. So, yeah, Cam Young, I like the look of him this week. He's got four top eight major championship finishes in his last seven major appearances. Why wouldn't he get down with a tougher, stretching, longer golf course like Copperhead? Not sure. And you get the feeling with, uh, with Cam, Cameron Young, that clearly he's overdue a victory and it's likely to be one of these poorer events. So if you go down the narrative of maiden PGA Tour winners, even going back to Gary Woodland here in 2011, won his first title here. It does happen quite a lot. So I'm on Young, 22 to 1. I got bet 365, eight places each way on Cam Young. Next up, 33 to 1. This guy's currently ranked 24th in the official world rankings. And he's well within the top 40, I think, now in the data golf rankings. President's Cup here. Don't mind a South Korean. Don't mind a Canadian. Don't mind a South African. Don't mind an Australian, although the best one's clearly gone to live. This guy's already won this year. Uh, he's already got a couple of top 10 finishes here, I believe. Um, he's also a, the sort that plays well at Harbour Town. Look on for Nick Taylor. He was T2 after 36 holes last week at the President's, uh, at the President's Cup. At the Players' Championship, then went backwards. But his approach play right now, and you know, we went through those strokes game metrics. He's there for approach. He's there for tee to green. He's there for putting. He's there for strokes gain current form. You're grabbing him for 33 to 1. That's a guy that has won twice in his last 26 outings. You're getting Justin Thomas at 14 to 1. A guy that hasn't won for two years or getting on for two years. So... Yeah, take your poison, really. Nick Taylor for me, 33 to 1 with Betfred. The other thing I was going to point out earlier, do not like players, do not like players that finished in a very good spot last week at the players. That did for Sepp Straka for me. Haven't seen anyone win this or any tournament post-TPC Sawgrass in any part of the schedule. 
that's been within the top 20 the previous week. So I'm against Doug Gim, I'm against Sepp Strucker, I'm against Xander, I'm against Maverick McNeely. Just list them through. I'm against them all this week. It was a straight red line job through those players. Last year, we did have Jordan Spieth contend, and he'd finish, I think, 14th or 16th at the players. So you might get some contenders in there, but ultimately, they do not win. So I've gone 33 to 1 Nick Taylor, 22 to 1 Cam Young. And then I'm higher up. Just had this discussion. Um, Kevin Yu. Now, Kevin Yu, I don't think Kevin Yu knows what he's doing when he gets out of bed. But one thing is noticeable with Kevin Yu. Third at the American Express, sixth at the Farmers Insurance Open, and ninth at the Cognizant Classic, start before last. Within though, within 2024 though, around those top nine finishes, there's three of them, and three and two of them in the top six. He's finished miscut, 58th, miscut, miscut, miscut. So I would not be surprised if Kevin Yu with my £1.50 each way on him, does miss the cut this week. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised if he contended for the victory. He seems to be Bermuda positive, third in Bermuda in 2022, third at PGA West this year, ninth at PGA National this year. That third at the Amex would have come on e uh, Tiff Eagle Greens with POA Trivialist Overseed, so that's a positive. He ranked fourth stro uh, for strokes going tee to green at the Cognizant. And then last week, he ranked first for strokes going off the tee, if you include those that missed the cut. And of course, yeah, he missed the cut. But he's driving the ball well. Tee to green game was excellent at PGA National, and that was only one appearance ago. Love Kevin New. Love Kevin New at 90 to 1. The kind of tour maiden that would take something like this out, I've got that with William Hill, eight place each way. And people go, oh, yeah, Kevin Yu, he's been doing quite well in 2024. A bit like a Taylor Moore from last year. Then I've gone, and this name again was very, very prominent in those strokes gained rankings. This guy, and a lot of you over in North America probably won't know much about him. 12th at last year's PGA Championship. He, in 2021, got to the last four of the WGC Dell Technologies match play, which they play at Austin Country Club, which they uh, play on Tiff Eagle Bermuda Grass Greens with Poa Trivialis Overlay. He's a three-time winner on the DP World Tour. Good events as well. Uh, the Dutch Open was one of them. He's won the... Uh, we will get there. He's won the Abu Dhabi, HSBC Abu Dhabi Championship. And his first victory was at St. Andrews at the um, Alfred Dunhill Link. So three good events on the DP World Tour. Used to be World Top 50. Now he's just a PGA Tour member that's just scratching his way around, trying to get his tour card for next year. Still ranks in the top 100 in the world. His um, approach play has been very, very good. Uh, he was in the top 16 at the Cognizant Classic. He was actually fourth heading into Sunday. He then came from behind and finished like an absolute train at the Puerto Rico Open, where he finished third. Victor Perez. We've already had one French win, Frenchman win this year on the PGA Tour. Victor Perez at 100 to 1, eight place each way with William Hill. I thought that was an excellent price on someone that's finished 16th and third and has three. DP World Tour titles to them. He's not afraid of winning. And this isn't exactly going to be one of those high-pressure events on the PGA Tour with maddening crowds. So might fit right into Perez's wheelhouse. He played here last year, finished 47th. Next up, wind, potential rain, a difficult golf course where greens and regulation are tricky. Potentially high scoring, and when I mean high scoring, I don't mean low scoring. So this isn't a birdie fest. I always like the look of the Canadian Mackenzie Hughes at events like this. The old magic beans routine. This guy, as we know, putting, 
chipping, strokes going around the green, absolutely fabulous. And then he has the odd spurt where he actually can hit some fairways and he can actually hit some greens. And that makes him a real danger at a golf course like this. So I've gone a point each way, 100 to 1 with William Hill, 8 place each way, on Mackenzie Hughes. His numbers last week have been eye-catching. He wins from very, very little. So you've got to be quite on the ball with him. He's not the kind of Ricky Fowler that's going to top 10, four out the previous five, and then win at 12 to 1. That's not Mackenzie Hughes. Mackenzie Hughes, 31st at Riviera. He's been playing the signature events. 30th at Bay Hill. Not exactly bad finishes, are they? Uh, no, Bay Hill is far too long for Mackenzie Hughes. 26 last week at TPC Sawgrass. Now, when you actually broke, broke down Hughes' performance, he made it on the number. And then he shot 69-68 over the weekend, which was added together. A tie for ninth for weekend scoring. And it was also just the way he did it. 26th for tee to green strokes gained on Saturday. Ninth for strokes gained tee to green on Sunday. And a lot of that was with approach, but also off the tee. Absolutely hitting the cover off the ball. It's as if Hughes has been doing some work, maybe with a new coach or something. But he's hitting the ball further. He's hitting the ball straighter. 17th for total driving, 12th for ball striking, and 11th for tee to green. Uh, well, he's yeah, positive across all categories last week at TPC Sawgrass. So it was a good finish there. But someone like Mackenzie Hughes um, will be aiming for that International President's Cup year, especially when Mike Weir is going to be captain. And when you look at Mackenzie Hughes, he's very, very limited on where he can be competitive. So somewhere like here, on Bermuda grass, on a course that isn't boomingly long, I think he's up. He's, he's in his real wheelhouse. I do. Two-time PGA Tour winner, both on Bermuda grass. 2016 RSM Classic, and also in 2022, he won at the Country Club at Jackson, the Sanderson Farms. 13th here in 2019. So, yeah, I'm on Mackenzie Hughes, 100 to 1, William Hill, eight places each way. And finally, friends of the podcast, you will remember last week, we were talking about the Belgian, who I pronounced had arrived on the PGA Tour. I know it was an alternate. Yeah, you know, a lot of these things, tongue in cheek. But worth noting, we are already, between myself, Paul Williams, and Barry O'Hanrahan, plotting where does Adrien Dumont de Chassard really come to town? Now, I know what it's like. You talk about it on a podcast. Uh, you think, oh, it's going to be down the line. It's going to be someone like the Byron Nelson, or it's going to be at the Corrales Champion, or it's going to be somewhere. And... Um, you think, you know, right, leave him away alone. And then all of a sudden, just pops up at a half-decent tournament. So I've covered him. I've gone half a point each way at 300 to 1, eight places each way at 50 odds with William Hill on Adrien Dumont de Chassard, the Belgian 24-year-old, who, interestingly enough, uh, won the BMW, BMW Charity Pro-Am in South Carolina last year on his Corn Ferry debut and then reeled off five top ten finishes. He was uh, sixth spot at the Puerto Rico Open last time out. He ranked eighth for total driving, fifth for greens in regulation, second for ball striking. He also shot 18 under across his final 54 holes at the Grand Reserve Country Club. He finished sixth behind Bryce Garnett. Someone that's sparky, someone that's extremely talented. I know that over here in Europe, we, we view Dumont de Chassard as someone that could be a future star and someone that could contend for Ryder Cup spots in the future. I'm not saying now. I'm not saying this year or next. But he's of the right ilk. He's, he's, no, um, he's no Ludwig Uberg yet. But he's a quality player who's go coming up through, came up through um, Chicago, I think it was University of Illinois. So good background, trained. Uh, clearly his education in golf has been both here in Europe, but also in the States. 
I don't I don't think Dumont Dumont de Chessard is a bad shout this week at 300 to 1. If he misses his cut, then misses his cut. He will be a player that's going to be close to my thinking on going this season, especially when we get to bent grass greens. So I've got Dumont de Chessard at 300 to 1. I've got Mackenzie Hughes at 100 to 1. Victor Perez at 100 to 1. Kevin Yu at 90 to 1. Nick Taylor at 33 to 1. And Cam Young at 22 to 1. Follow me at Bamford Golf on X. Please like the show, 175 likes. Um, subscribe to the channel. And of course, just let me know, write what you'd like in the comment section below. It's all good for the algorithm. I will be back next week for the tournament that's taking place in Houston, Texas. We're going to the Lone Star State. I'll see you again 